communities and some sanity back into this debate. We'll leave the rule debate at this time. The House is gambling in an hour of general debate on that gun bill. Ten amendments to be considered. Also, a bill work on a bill repealing the 3% withholding tax for government contractors. Live House coverage now here on C-SPAN. Let us pray. God of all the universe, we give you thanks for giving us another day. On this day, we are mindful of our shared inheritance from a great ancestor of faith who was called by you to leave his home and go to a place he would be shown by you. Bless the members of this people's house and their Senate colleagues who honor our pioneers of space exploration this day with the Congressional Gold Medal. We thank you for the spirit of exploration that you have placed within us, in which our great nation, and most especially some of our most heroic citizens, have utilized to expand the horizons of human longing and possibility through space travel. In these difficult times in our history, most notably for our fellow citizens struggling to make ends meet, May the members of this House imagine solutions that might seem to be as unreachable as the moon once was thought to be and work together to obtain the common goal of a working and prosperous America. May all that is done this day be for your greater honor and glory. Amen. The chair has examined the journal of the last day's proceedings and announces to the House her approval thereof. And pursuant to clause one of rule one, the journal, journal stands approved. The Pledge of Allegiance will be led today by the gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Wahlberg. Please join me in this awesome privilege. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Chair will now entertain up to 20 requests for one-minute speeches on each side of the aisle. For what purpose does the gentleman from South Carolina rise? The gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker, according to the Department of the Treasury, as of November 14, 2011, the national debt had reached $14.973 trillion and will reach $15 trillion in the coming days. This is an economic threat to American families. Since the President took office <clears throat> in 2009, the deficit has increased by a record $4.3 trillion. In order to protect America's future, we must be serious about cutting runaway spending, and we must act now to promote small businesses to create jobs. House Republicans have sent nearly 90 bills to the Senate for consideration to encourage jobs. This legislation dealt directly with limiting spending, terminating failing housing programs, and encouraging job growth and job creation. It's time for the liberals in the, in the Senate and President to do the same. In conclusion, God bless our troops, and we will never forget September 11th in the global war on terrorism. Our sympathy to the family of Steve Codman, Assistant Solicitor of Aiken, Barnwell, and Bamberg. California rise. Without objection. Madam Speaker, today I rise to honor the contributions of America's first people in recognition of Native American Heritage Month. Throughout history, Native Americans have made countless advances for our nation and our society and our culture. The Constitution separation of power we have in our government is based on the structure of your nation. Jim Thorpe brought home two Olympic gold medals in 1912. Navajo code talkers helped us win the Pacific Campaign in World War II. Ira Hayes became a national hill, raising the flag of Iwo Jima. Jim Pluckett is one of only four men to win both the Hensman Trophy and the Super Bowl MVP award. As a member of Congress, I've introduced a bill to establish Native American holiday in California. And in 2009, I introduced legislation signed by President Obama designating Friday after Thanksgiving as Native American Heritage Day. We must never take for granted the rich history and culture 
of our first Americans. This November, I encourage everyone to honor the contributions of our tribal communities and recognize Native American heritage. I yield back, balance my time. For what purpose does the gentleman from Michigan rise? For one minute. And the gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker, I rise today to express my opposition to the new guidelines from the administration that restricts marketing certain food and beverage projects, products toward children. Instead of principles, these guidelines should be treated as what they really are, unnecessary regulations. As introduced by the administration, these rules falsely claim to be voluntary. For the first time in our nation's history, the food and beverage industry and advertising businesses will be forced to completely alter the way they promote even their healthiest products. Great Michigan companies like Kellogg's that already make nutritious products will be harshly affected. Stripping Tony the Tiger off the cereal boxes isn't going to make children healthier. What it will do is tack on another burdensome regulation for Kellogg's and other companies to deal with and destroy an American icon and cost jobs. Guidelines with this type of power should, be, should not circumvent the normal rulemaking process, including review by the OMB. These guidelines should be withdrawn immediately by the administration. I yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from California rise? The gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker, last year unemployment insurance kept over three million people, including a million kids, out of poverty. And these benefits are due to expire and without an extension, 300,000 or more than 300,000 Californians will lose this lifeline. Extending unemployment insurance is a smart thing to do. It creates jobs. People spend their benefits. They buy gasoline, groceries, put people to work in the community, send their kids to school. People scraping by on unemployment aren't looking for a handout. These are people who have been working for a long time. They are employable. There just aren't jobs, and they're out there looking to find one. We should help them. They don't, they're not looking for a handout. They're looking for a hand up. Are we going to tell them we had money for wars, and bank bailouts, tax cuts for millionaires, and not for workers? I don't think so. A constituent frustrated at gridlock in Congress wrote, America, wake up before it's too late. Our political system doesn't work. Let's all work together and prove this constituent of mine wrong. I yield back the balance of my time. For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas rise? Request permission to address the House for one minute. The gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker, in the vast, wide open, rugged, desolate hinterland southern border regions between the safer legal ports of entry, the cartels smuggle people and drugs into the United States. State and local officials do what they can to help the feds protect these areas, but they are simply outmanned and out equipped. Madam Speaker, the Border Patrol needs help from local officials. Millions of pieces of equipment will soon return from Iraq. This includes UAVs that could be used as eyes in the sky for the border defenders. This equipment could fill in the massive gaps in surveillance of remote areas of the border. I've introduced a SEND Act that would send UAVs, Humvees, night surveillance equipment to our border governments. Washington could partner with border states to protect America. Sending surplus military equipment to the southern border will give Americans a return on their investment by en enhancing our national security. The American people have invested billions of dollars in equipment used to secure Iraq. Now it's time to use this same equipment to secure the United States. And that's just the way it is. For what purpose does the gentlelady from Pennsylvania rise? The gentleman, gentlelady is recognized. As a daughter of a Korean War veteran, I firmly believe that we have the responsibility to better ensure that our nation's veterans find work when they return home. Too many veterans, especially post 9-11, are struggling to find employment. We can and must do better. Last week, I introduced the Hiring Our Veterans Act to strengthen current law that I introduced and championed successfully in 2007 and again in 2009, which provided tax credit to employers to hire unemployed veterans. Today, the House of Representatives, in a bipartisan way, will pass legislation that builds on this effort and expands job opportunities for our veterans. It will expand the maximum tax credit available to employers who hire disabled veterans who have been unemployed for six months, and it strengthens 
lessens the hiring tax credit to benefit both short-term and long-term unemployed veterans. This is a huge victory for our brave men and women and their families who have sacrificed so much for our nation and our freedom. And in, as we wind down two wars, it is our duty and our honor to support our veterans and better ensure that they have good, stable jobs when they return to home. For what purpose does the gentleman from Arkansas rise? Gentleman's recognized. Madam Speaker, I rise today to honor McKee Foods, a company in my district best known for its Little Debbie snack cakes. McKee Foods is a role model for companies across the country. It's a company committed to excellence, excellence in customer service, excellence in the treatment of its employees, and excellence in finding a better way, which, by the way, is McKee's motto. In 1982, the company built a plant in Gentry, Arkansas. Today, the plant is the lifeblood of the community. It employs more than 1,500 people who take pride in their work, who are loyal to their company, and who believe in service to their community. McKee has been best known for developing innovative processes to improve its operations and become a better corporate citizen. That's why the company's recent announcement that its Gentry plant produces zero landfill waste comes as no surprise. Two years ago, McKee's plant management team and employees came together and challenged themselves to be better stewards of the environment by producing zero landfill waste. True to form, the plant teamed up with local recycling companies and put in place new processes to achieve this goal. Madam Speaker, I congratulate McKee Foods for its accomplishment. It is a tribute to the dedication of the company's leadership and its employees. And I yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Rhode Island rise? The gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker, I rise today to honor Rhode Island's former Attorney General Julius Michelson. Julie passed away at his home this past Saturday. Julie Michelson was a brilliant and caring man, deeply committed to social justice and equality. He was an accomplished lawyer and a distinguished public servant who served our country both abroad and at home. Julie was a first lieutenant in the Army in World War II. A passionate defender of justice, he also served as general counsel to the Rhode Island AFL-CIO, a state senator in Rhode Island, and state's attorney general. Julie is credited with playing a key role in the passage of our state's fair housing law, which prohibits discrimination and access to housing. I had the pleasure of knowing Julie as a friend, a colleague, and a neighbor. His role in the community and his commitment to justice was unmatched. He made the world a better place. I offer my sincere condolences to Rita and the entire Michelson family. Julie Michelson will be greatly missed. And I yield back the balance of my time. For what purpose does the gentleman from Pennsylvania rise? With permission to address the House for one minute, revise and extend. Gentleman's recognized. Madam Speaker, this is a tale of two jobs programs. In the first, the government moves to put $500 million in loans in a private company. These loans are supposed to build a factory and to create what the Vice President calls permanent jobs. The President tours their facilities, the Secretary of Energy lauds the company, top White House officials show an interest in the project. OMB worries are overruled and the money is handed out. A year later, the company is bankrupt and all the government money is lost. In the second tale, a private company wants to build a pipeline that would create 20,000 jobs directly and 100,000 jobs indirectly. They don't need a single dime of government money. In fact, they're paying the bill for significant government environmental reviews of the project. Even though their project is declared safe by the State Department, they're ordered to perform another year of environmental studies. Solyndra and Keystone XL. We have a White House that is eager to waste the public's money on one failing company, but stands in the way of another company who doesn't need a dollar from the American taxpayer. Go figure. I yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Michigan rise? And the gentleman is recognized. More than 400 unemployed Americans have shared their story with us in the last two weeks. Here they are. They illustrate in no uncertain terms the urgent need for Congress to extend federal unemployment insurance through 2012. Without action, two million Americans will lose their benefits by February, as shown in this chart. Two million Americans like Phil from Clinton Township. He wrote to us with a resolve common among the stories that we've received, and I quote, I am by no means unintelligent. I am by no means lazy, and I am by no means giving up. Without unemployment benefits, I will not be able to pay my bills, including my cell phone, so I may receive calls from potential employers, 
and finding something to eat will become increasingly difficult. Congress has never allowed the federal program to expire with, with the unemployment rate as high as it remains today. And we must not start now. We must act now. For what purpose does the gentleman from Michigan rise? I rise to address the House for one moment. And the gentleman is recognized. <coughs> minute. Madam Speaker, I rise today to ask the American people to let their voice be heard. Our crushing national debt and our out-of-control spending uh, is something that has made, been made aware of uh, for so many, but it is time to do something about it. And as part of the House Republican plan for America's job creators, we have a stated goal to pay down America's unsustainable debt burden and start living within our means. Uh, Madam Speaker, when I served in the Michigan legislature, we had to live under that same requirement of a balanced budget according to the Michigan Constitution. It made for some very, very difficult decisions. But you know what, Madam Speaker? The American people are not only ready, they are asking for this reasonable step to be made for us to insert this balanced budget amendment into the United States Constitution as well. They need to do it in their own lives. It's time government do it as well with theirs. Living within their, our means is a requirement in their lives. It's a requirement for a vast majority of the state governments. It's time that the federal government do that as well. It's time for your voice to be heard. And frankly, Madam Chair, Madam Speaker, it's time for the American people to hold accountable those who will not listen. Thank you. For what purpose does the gentlelady from California rise? The gentlelady is recognized. Last week, we celebrated Veterans Day, a time to remember those who have served our country and their families. As a nation, we must live up to our obligations and responsibilities to care for our servicemen and women from the moment they join up and throughout their lives. And we have done this through the post-9-11 GI Bill and our efforts to strengthen TRICARE. But now with over 12% unemployment for veterans, there's so much more we must do. And that's why I support the Putting Veterans to Work tax credits for hiring veterans and wounded warriors that will be on the floor today. And it's why I've introduced my own legislation to help our military medics transition into civilian EMT jobs so that they can continue their service here at home. Our commitment to our men and women in uniform doesn't end when they return. It lasts a lifetime. I urge my colleagues to support these bills so we can fulfill our commitment. I yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Tennessee rise? I ask unanimous consent to address the House for one minute. The gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker, uh, this week we will take what I believe is one of the most important votes we will ever cast in the U.S. Congress on adding a balanced budget amendment to the U.S. Constitution. With our national debt approaching $15 trillion, more than $47,900 for every man, woman, and child in this nation, it's time to get serious about spending. That's why we must succeed where other Congresses have failed and send the, uh, this amendment to the states for ratification. According to the CBO, the budget submitted by the President earlier this year would add at no time over the next 10 years bring the annual deficit below $748 billion. This balanced budget amendment would require Washington to live within its means just exactly like families do, cities, counties, states do every day. It simply says that spending cannot exceed revenues unless three-fifths of each chamber approves. Forty-eight states, including my home state of Tennessee, already have a balanced budget amendment. This is just common sense. I urge my colleagues to support this amendment and the principles that it represents. Spend less than you take in. I yield back. For what purpose does the gentlelady from Maine rise? Just ask for one minute and revise again. recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, when I moved to Maine 40 years ago and started a little organic farm, growing and selling healthy food locally was out of the mainstream. It was something that the back to the land crowd was into, but here in Washington, the government was pushing farmers to, in the words of Agricultural Secretary Earl Butts, get big or get out. It turns out that kind of thinking wasn't good for family farms. It wasn't good for rural communities, and it wasn't good for our nation's health.
That's why I've introduced a bill that is intended to make it easier for farmers to sell food locally and regionally, make it easier for schools to buy healthy local food, and easier for us to rebuild the local and regional food systems. Over 100 organizations and 53 of my colleagues have endorsed the Local Farms Food and Jobs Act, a package of reforms to the Farm Bill that will help move our nation's food policy in the right direction. Everywhere I go, people just want to know that the food they put on their table is healthy, fresh, and good for their family. This bill will help that make that easier for American families. I yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from New York rise? Gentleman's recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise to share my disappointment with the recent proposal by the administration to restrict food and beverage marketing. Like many members of this body, I'm concerned about the rise in childhood obesity. However, the proposed guidelines will do little to address the issue. In particular, I'm concerned that this proposal blatantly contradicts existing federal nutrition standards. Under the administration's food marketing restrictions, many healthy products could no longer be advertised or marketed, including most soups, breads, cereals, yogurts, and most cheese. These unreasonable standards impact products that are considered healthy by the administration's school lunch program, WIC program, and new dietary guidelines. Any proposal to regulate food should be based on sound nutritional standards and common sense. We should let science, not politics, lead the way. The first step is to complete the study originally requested by the Congress, and then we'll go from there. I yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Connecticut rise? The gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker, I rise today to honor the service and sacrifice of Army Staff Sergeant Ari Cullors, who lost his life serving in Afghanistan on, on October 30, 2011, in Kandahar Province. Sergeant Cullors was born 28 years ago in New London, Connecticut, and later moved with his family to Waterford, where he attended school and graduated from Waterford High School in 2001. As his principal, Don Macrino of Waterford High, said, he was a hard worker at school, but when he got into the service, I think that was a place where he felt he could really make his mark. He joined the Army in 2004, deployed twice to Afghanistan, the first tour in December 2008, and returned again this year in March uh, before he perished a few weeks ago. Ari Culler's passing reminds us of the sacrifices that have been made and continue to be made by our military overseas. Last Thursday, the day before Veterans Day, there was a huge outpouring of support of Watersford townspeople who lined the streets, who knew Ari, his mother Robin, his brother Jacob, who himself has served a tour of duty in Iraq, and many who did not, but who wanted to pay respect for his sacrifice and service. I ask my colleagues to join them in honoring Ari Culler's life and service to our nation and extend our condolences to his family. And I yield back the balance of my time. For what purpose does the gentleman from Illinois rise? The gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker, I rise today to congratulate Sandy Pearl for receiving the AJC's prestigious Judge Learned Hand Human Relations Award. The Learned Hand Award is presented to leaders in the legal profession displaying the highest principles and ideals of humanitarianism and betterment of the community. In both his professional and community activities, Sandy Pearl has shown that he carries on this proud tradition. A native of the 10th District of Illinois, Sandy has served in a number of leadership roles at his firm and is consistently recognized as one of the top lawyers in his industry. But what makes Sandy stand out for this well-deserved recognition is his commitment to the civic and charitable causes. Through his active leadership in organizations such as the Jewish Federation, the Golden Apple Foundation that recognizes excellence in teaching, through his work on global issues with the Chicago chapter of the AJC and with the American Israel Public Relations or Public Affairs Committee, Sandy has dedicated himself to improving his community and fighting for important causes worldwide. I want to congratulate my friend Sandy Pearl on this tremendous honor, the Learned Hand Award. With that, I yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Missouri rise? Gentleman's recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It's been 45 weeks since the Republican Party took control of this House and they still haven't passed a serious jobs bill. In fact, just the opposite. They've blocked proposals that would put millions back to work. 
to play political games while people are hurting, to attack the president's job instead of creating jobs. Last week, we honored those who have fought to protect our country, many of whom are turning to a tough job market. That's why this week my office held a veterans' job seminar in St. Louis. When our troops return home, they deserve our promises kept. The American Jobs Act will get more than one million Americans back to work. Teachers, firefighters, police, construction workers will encourage small businesses to grow and hire. Next week, we will celebrate Thanksgiving, a holiday that brings families and communities together. And next week, I hope those in this people's house who so clearly lost touch will hear loud and clear from the people they represent and come back with renewed focus to pull together to tackle the common challenges we face as a nation. I yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Illinois rise? Request permission to address the House for one minute. The gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker, I was pleased to see last week that the Senate finally followed the House and passed one of our pro-growth bills. But while repealing the 3% withholding tax is a step in the right direction, it's not enough. We've sent them more than 20 other bills, each of which would stimulate job creation and a pro-growth environment. These aren't ide ideological bills. They're common sense pieces of legislation that were passed with bipartisan support. They would get government bureaucrats off the backs of small businesses and enable the private sector to invest and grow their businesses, putting Americans back to work and getting our economy moving again. I hope the Senate will listen to the American people and pass the 20 bills that we've sent to them. I yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from New Jersey rise? The gentleman is recognized. Madam well, Speaker, I rise today to express my deep concern about the closure of post offices across this country. For decades, the post office has sustained and created American jobs in every corner of this country. Closing these vital institutions will not only hurt our economy, but will devastate American families who rely on these jobs. The closing of thousands of post offices will adversely affect minorities who live in low-income neighborhoods, the elderly who need the post office that is within walking distance to send letters to their families, and small business owners who use the U.S. Postal Service as a way to conduct business. Additionally, rural communities, the hardest hit by the economy downturn, will see the greatest number of closures, causing their communities to further suffer. It has been reported that 10,000 of the smallest post offices were, clo were closed. The Postal Service would only save 1 percent of its total yearly budget. Furthermore, the United States Postal Service branch closing would mean that approximately 5,000 postal employees will lose their jobs. If we are serious about economic recovery, we must save post offices that provide jobs of thousands of Americans and make the necessary reforms to strengthen our postal service. And I yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Ohio rise? The gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker, I have breaking news for President Obama and Senate Democrats. House Republicans have passed more than 20 bills that would create much-needed jobs, but the Democrat-controlled Senate won't even consider them. The hardworking people of eastern and southeastern Ohio are ready to get back to work. In fact, they've been ready. So I'm serious about creating and protecting jobs now. That's why I was proud to introduce the Coal Miner Employment and Domestic Energy Infrastructure Protection Act, preventing the Obama administration from enacting more job-killing regulations. This administration's war on America's coal industry will be devastating to eastern and southeastern Ohio. Up to 27,000 direct and indirect coal jobs are at risk from the administration's proposed rewrite of the stream buffer zone rule, and that's just one regulation. This bill is part of the House Republican Jobs Plan that you can find at jobs.gop.gov, and I urge the Senate to get to work and pass these important bills now. For what purpose does the gentlelady from California rise? Madam Speaker, I rise to address the House for one minute to revise and extend my remarks. The gentlelady is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise today to recognize Mr. Daniel Foster, the recipient of a Civil Star and a Purple Heart, and a veteran of both Iraq and Afghanistan. However, he has waited more than one year to receive his benefits that he both deserves and has earned because the Department of Veterans Affairs has lost his benefit application. 
over and over and over, person by person. As a result of this carelessness with Mr. Foster's files, he was unable to receive his VA benefit checks for the last year and was not able to pay the mortgage on his disabled father's home in Costa Mesa, California, where he resides with his father. And now, the home is scheduled to be foreclosed on November 23rd, the day before Thanksgiving. Since Mr. Foster does not reside in my district, he came in and asked for help. I am happy to say that Representative Rohrbacher, Mr. Foster's representative, has now opened a case on his behalf. But as a member of the House Armed Services Committee, I work every day to ensure that our veterans receive the benefits they need and deserve. So I'll continue to follow Mr. Foster's care case and encourage veterans in my district that are experiencing these types of difficulties to please contact us at our Garden Grove office. Thank you, and I yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas rise? To address the House for one minute and revise and extend my remarks. And the gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It's my honor to recognize the Corpus Christi Veterans Band under the direction of Ram Chavez for being awarded Advocate of the Year by Corpus Christi Mayor's Committee for Veterans Affairs. The Corpus Christi Veterans Band performs all around the coastal bend to honor and pay tribute to America's military troops and veterans. The Corpus Christi Veterans Band has been performing for over 20 years at various ceremonies, receptions, tributes, and funerals, and have demonstrated sincere dedication to honoring South Texas veterans. Their flag ceremony is one of the most moving performances I've ever attended. The men and women of the band personally fund their group to inspire patriotism and remind Americans of the courage and sacrifices that our service men and women and make to keep this great nation free. Their constant dedication and support of our veterans, our community, and our nation is one that every American can learn from. I'm proud to represent such a fine group of American patriots, the Corpus Christi Veterans Band. Thank you, and I yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Connecticut rise? Gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker, under pressure from the American people, the Republican majority in this House is running around with 15 or 20 bills that they claim to be jobs bills, which of course they are not. If you look at them, you will see that they are bills that allow polluters to dirty our waters and to fill our air with toxins. Now, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which actually studies this stuff, asks employers, why are you not hiring? Why have you gotten rid of people? Nowhere in those answers do we hear the word too much regulation. It's a canard. John Bartlett, conservative economist, member of the Reagan administration, said that the Republican Party is taking advantage of the need for jobs to push a deregulatory agenda. It is time to get serious about jobs and not try to fool the American people that filling our water with toxins and making our air polluted is somehow good for this country or good for jobs. And with that, I yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Washington rise? And the gentleman is recognized. <clears throat> Madam Speaker, eight days from now is Thanksgiving. We're all going to sit down to a nice plump turkey and enjoy ourselves. Well, not everybody. All across this nation, we're seeing people protest. They're young people, middle aged people, and older people even parents with kids, and these folks are mad. They're seeing Wall Street companies profit after getting us into the economic mess we have, and at the same time, they're among the millions of people in this country who are unemployed that are still without a job. There are four people looking for every job out there. It's not easy. And Congress, the Republicans are sitting on their hands again, we're coming up to the end of the year. I want my Republican contract colleagues to take notice. If you continue to push the unemployed and struggling Americans instead of focusing and instead focus on tax breaks for corporations and the wealthy, the Occupy movement will be in your districts on your doorsteps next November. Unemployment benefits should be extended immediately. I yield back the balance of my time. For what purpose does the gentleman from Michigan rise? 
else for one minute and advise or, and to extend my remarks. The gentleman is recognized for one minute. I rise today in support of H.R. 3345, an act to continue the current federal unemployment programs through next year. If Congress doesn't act by the end of the year, Americans who have lost their jobs through no fault of their own will begin losing their unemployment benefits in January. Tens of thousands of Michiganders will lose their benefits by February. These benefits are their lifeline for necessities like groceries, utilities, and rent or mortgage payments. Once these families can no longer pay for basic necessities, it will create a ripple effect costing nearly a million U.S. jobs nationwide. Poverty is at its highest level since 1993, and middle-class household incomes are at their lowest level since 1997. Unemployment benefits have kept over 3 million Americans, including 1 million children, out of poverty last year. And now the Republicans are willing to let these necessary benefits expire. Madam Speaker, as we approach the holiday season and millions of Americans are worried about paying their rent, I urge my colleagues to support this bill and keep millions of Americans out of poverty. I yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from New York rise? The gentleman is recognized. My colleagues, some of you may have read that the protesters at Wall Street are now being subjected to attacks by the police and law enforcement for loitering and other violations. There is no question in anyone's mind that the right to free speech has restrictions and it's not an open end and we have to be considerate of the people that are adversely affected. But there is also a moral issue in addition to the constitutional issue that no one can challenge that these protests this has brought to the attention of the American people. And that is the fact that we have a moral obligation to take care of those people who are vulnerable. Take care of those people who are sick. Take care of the people that are aged and our children, not just before birth, but after birth. The fact that we're talking about turning these questions over to 12 members of Congress, it's not just unconstitutional, it is immoral. And so I'm calling on the spiritual leaders of our country, don't leave this vacuum. Bring in with Catholic and Protestants and all the religions to say there's something wrong with the formula that we have for the poor. For what purposes? The gentleman from Georgia, Rice. And the gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker, recently Atlantic Magazine gave a voice to the jobless in America. The words of one person speaks for million. Unemployment dehumanized the real person, one American rights. You lose the essence of your identity and value. You become a number, a label, a resume, a failure, a defect, desperate, poor, and separated from society. Being unemployed is to be silent disrespected, on par with being homeless, mentally ill, or addicted. Today we speak for millions of Americans who will be pushed to the edges of our society, locked out and left behind if we fail to act. The jobless in America elected us so that we will have a voice, they will have a voice in these debates. They are not points on a graph are numbers on a page. They are human beings. We must not abandon the people of this nation. We must pass the unemployment insurance extension and do it without delay. Wake up, Congress. Wake up and do what is right. For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas rise? I ask to, to consent to address the House for one minute. The gentleman is recognized. As families gather uh, this next week for Thanksgiving, some six million Americans will be left wondering whether they will be able to secure a job before their federal unemployment coverage expires. There are people like Jesse, a retired Navy veteran in San Antonio who has applied for over 300 jobs unsuccessfully. Sadly, some Republicans continue to blame the unemployment problem on the unemployed even though there are about four people for every job opening in America today. 
Too many remain jobless, not for a uh, lack of wanting to work, but for a lack of work. Let's continue to encourage more job creation. But for those who lack a job, we also must preserve the lifeline of extended unemployment benefits. It's only the turkey that ought to be carved at Thanksgiving, not the unemployed's ability to share in the bounty of America. I yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Pennsylvania rise? The gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker, today the House considers the National Right to Carry Reciprocity Act. I'm a proud co-sponsor of this bill because it will protect American Second Amendment rights by allowing citizens who have a valid permit to carry a firearm in any state in the country with a concealed carry law. The Second Amendment applies to law-abiding citizens all across America, and this Reciprocity Act will protect Americans' rights as they travel throughout the country. Law-abiding citizens in western Pennsylvania should be allowed to exercise their constitutional rights even when they leave the Commonwealth's borders. All Americans have an individual right to bear arms that is protected by the Constitution. I urge my colleagues to support the Second Amendment and vote for the National Right to Carry Reciprocity Act. For what purpose does the gentleman from Rhode Island rise? And the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Madam Speaker, I uh, first of all want to join with my colleague from Rhode Island, Mr. Cicilline, in extending my condolences to the family of Julie Michelson, uh, former Attorney General of Rhode Island, a dedicated public servant, someone who truly made a difference for the people of our state. Uh, he made a difference, and he will be greatly missed. Mr. Speaker, next week, Americans will be celebrating Thanksgiving with their families. Unfortunately, far too many will also be preoccupied with the uncertainty of being unemployed and finding ways just to put food on the table. Our country currently has a 9% unemployment rate, and there are four unemployed workers for every open job right now. In my home state of Rhode Island, our unemployment rate continues to hold steady above the national average at 10.5%. Mr. Speaker, where is the urgency on job creation? The House just returned from its 11th scheduled recess of the year. With only 45 days left until the end of the year, the Republican-led House has failed to take any meaningful action to spur job creation this year. Mr. Speaker, our cons constituents deserve better than this. The American people are demanding more than this. Congress must put partisan politics aside and focus on growing our economy and creating new job opportunities and getting this country back on track. It is our obligation to do this, and we need to do it now. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. For what purpose does the gentleman from Michigan rise? The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm very concerned about reports that the city of Detroit may be running out of money as early as April of next year. One of the problems that Detroit is facing is that too many of our tax dollars are going to pay off debt owed by the city and owed by the schools. At the very time we need to put more police officers, more firefighters, more emergency medical providers on the street. At a time where we need to hire more school teachers and open more schools that will truly educate and graduate our young people. That's why I'm urging this Congress, this House specifically, to adopt the Detroit Jobs Trust Fund. And I want to thank you personally, Mr. S Madam Speaker, for the leadership and vision in supporting this legislation, which would allow federal tax dollars paid by Detroiters to be invested in Detroit, invested to cut taxes to make our streets safer and our schools stronger. This will not only help put Detroiters back to work, it will help our country. Because when you rebuild Detroit, you renew America. I yield my time back. The gentleman yields back. And pursuant to Clause 12A of Rule 1, the House will stand in recess subject to the call of the chair.